today we're talking about <laughs> today we're talking about one of the best uh, movies from not just the 2000s but probably the last comedies 25 years it was the 1970s looking good san diego in a simpler time Hey, Garth, how's the divorce? Oh, not so good. I'll probably never see my kids. Fantastic. It took a simpler man. Follow leads, confirm sources. Real journalism, my friend. Great. Right on. Now, what's a lead? Will Ferrell is Ron Burgundy. Who's that handsome devil? A Californian uh. so popular. <laughs> you stay classy, San Diego. Yeah! He could have been governor. Oh. Hey, I like that fanny. <laughs> oh, Mr. Burgundy. Anchorman, the legend of Ron Burgundy. This one came out 2004. Five, 2004. Five, four. Uh, like, one of the most quotable, you love quotable movies. From, I do. From, like, 1983. From 1972, <laughs> even. I mean, like, whenever Blazing Saddles was, like, in the 70s. But do you quote a movie like Anchorman as much as you quoted Coming to America and stuff? Because this, for me, from for my generation, I don't know how you want to say is like probably the most quoted movie. This in The Hangover. I love Lamp. I love Lamp. I mean, I, I mean, bad. with me, I'm not exactly the, the poster child of, you know, like Gen X or cusp of Gen X to say like, what movie is the quotable thing? Because I pick the quotes and I'll make them work. Like I'll drop a coming to America quote in pretty much the same line as I'll drop a, an Anchorman quote. But as a spokesman for Gen X right now, is what's like the most quotable because i would say confidently as a spokesman for millennials that this super bad hangover are probably like the top three i don't know that's that's tough because again like the 80s there were so many quotable movies even if they were not good movies um like better off dead you look pretty stupid to me. Thank you. Which we should definitely do on this I can honestly podcast. say I've never quoted that movie in my life. I have quoted that movie so much in my life. It's not a bad movie. No. It's just not like up to par with like a Trading Places, which the quotes in that are just off the wall. Say, man, when I was growing up, we wanted jacuzzi. We had to fart in the tub. Again, for me, it's like I find the quotes and I'll make them work for, regardless. For me and for a lot of people in this movie, it's... Uh, San Diego translates to whale's vagina. They named it San Diego, which of course in German means a whale's vagina. Say it all the time. Yep. Anytime you think, I like, in going to San Diego, I made that joke a thousand times. I'm kind I'm sure. of a big deal. Milk is a bad yeah. choice. Milk was a bad choice. I use those lines as well. This is just like 80 minutes or 90, whatever it is. I don't think it's very long of of quotes, yeah, of line after line. They did a very good job of, of keeping it very quotable. Thank you, Joe and Chris. I appreciate your support of our movie. Stay classy, Velvet Hamster. Because 19 years later, I still make reference to the San Diego jokes. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. Mm -hmm. My friends and I say that all the time. I don't even know why we're talking about San Diego in conversation. Maybe next time, keep that disrespectful talk about San Diego out of your mouth, huh, Joe Kaiser? I know where you live. Or I'm Ron Burgundy? Yeah, the, the, the teleprompter jokes. Yeah, with the teleprompter jokes. Every yeah. time we film something on a teleprompter, somebody makes that joke. Yep. Stay classy, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy? I mean, I think we made that joke when we were filming, like, some of our old stuff. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm Chris from Chicago. Yeah. 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 The thing is, is that this is a, a movie at a same time, similar time, to, like, Wedding Crashers. Yeah, which we shat all over. Which, there's a big difference, though. Like that one was quotable too, but the sub like the subject matter was problematic. I'm problematic. He's a problem for that movie, and that's why that one like doesn't really hold up, and people People's aren't like they'll still, they'll still quote it. Yeah. But it just doesn't hold up. People aren't like you know what I want to watch. I want to watch Wedding Crashers. They don't really say that. Like, but hey, let's watch Anchorman. Yeah, let's watch Anchorman because. Even though, like, some of the humor can sometimes be a little, like... Choose your words carefully, Chris. Crass for, like, older generations. You know, like, the boner joke when he's got a huge erection. <laughs> you know, things like that are just... 
you know, a, an older generation isn't gonna think it's as funny. It's still hilarious. Sex Panther. But like, th- it's it's not. It doesn't cross the line. It, it it like moves towards it, but it doesn't ever cross that line. Don't cross this line with your movie quotes. You know what's interesting is Wedding Crashers. Speaking of, we're always talking about movies that are just on TV all the time. Wedding Crashers is on TV all the time. Uh, that's astounding to me. Yeah. Like, especially in the age of wokeness and whatever, that it's still a thing. And, and w- w- way more than, I think, Anchorman. I don't know if I've ever seen Anchorman. It's on streaming. Like, everything's on yeah, for something. Sure. This is probably on, like, HBO or something. Which but. is funny because of the two of us, you would have assumed that I'm still a guy who has cable and, like, watches on TV and you're the one that cut the cord, but it's the exact no, I, opposite I, way. I, like, I've, I, can't I cut, cut the cord, the cord like, years ago. Yeah, and so, I, I mean, you talk about, like, flipping through the channels and, like, finding something on. Like, I can't, I can't do that anymore. It's, it's a, like, I have to know what I want to watch. And I have to pick it and watch it. I mean, I do that. I'm a fucking sucker because I pay for RCN, HBO, Paramount, Netflix, Hulu, uh... Amazon Prime. Do you know how much cable costs? Well, considering like all of the other services, it's probably equal to the services. Like if you want to have the services or you want to have cable. But I'm guessing cable's like now like 120 a month. Oh, no. Oh, buddy. No, so my, <laughs> my, my building covered the cost of cable for a while, ever since we moved into the building, which made it easy. Covered cable and internet. Like a year goes by, we lived there for like a year, and the building sent out an email saying that not enough people use the cable. Who would have thought? Uh, they're cutting the cable. They still cover the internet. So if you want to c- keep the cable service, you can. But if not, the, you don't have to pay for anything. So I wanted to keep the cable service because my biggest problem, and it's a weird thing, is like I just can't watch sports on delay. If you know what happened in the Met game, don't say anything. I taped it. Hello. It bothers me. I don't know why. Which is funny because, like, I... I just watch over the air on antenna. And so like, I don't have a delay. If you, if you do like Furbo or um, uh, YouTube TV or something, there's like a 20 second or oh, 45 okay. second delay. Yeah. And I get alerts on my phone and it's, it's an anxiety thing. It's stupid. I should yeah. just get over it. But I figured, okay, so if they're still covering internet and I just have to pay for cable, that can't be that expensive, right? It's, I'll, this is a two part like shock and horror thing. It is 190. Uh, the actual cost of cable itself is just ninety dollars. In Chicago, it's one hundred and six dollars of taxes. That I called RCN. I'm like, "What the hell is this?" And they're like, "I don't understand why your bill's so high." And the guy I was on the phone with is in Charlotte, and he's like, "Holy shit!" Like. You pay that much in taxes in Chicago? I'm like, yeah. I mean, I, 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 as a confession, I do know that because of some of the research that yeah. I had done on right. like taxes but in But it's Chicago, still jarring like, when you still see the bill. It is. That's ridiculous. Yeah, um, I'm a sucker. Yeah. This will be my plug here for uh, American Express. No free advertisements, Chris. Didn't you see the graphic on screen earlier that your sexy editor included? You know me and my love of credit cards and uh, things like that, but um, we have a couple of these American Express Platinum cards, and as part of it, there's a $20 a month streaming credit or benefit. So uh, my Hulu, Disney Plus, uh, I sucked Peacock. What? I sucked it up and got Peacock. Like the, with oh, I have the, Peacock too. The Peacock one. I probably spent um, like $300 a month. <laughs> and something else are, are free for me because of the credit card. That's pretty cool. So like that's good at least. Um, and then I've made it work. I mean. I haven't. I'm poor now. Please, sir. I want some more. But Anchorman is not on. <laughs> to get back to the point. <laughs> get back to the. Anchorman is never around, on yeah. uh, cable. It's on like HBO or, or something. But this is so loved that you'd think, I know it's like buying the rights to it or whatever, that it should just be on loop it, all the time. It should, but I would say further that the first draft of this movie, I would watch the hell out of, even more so than this. Because it, it's stuff they cut out? So the original first draft of this movie was a plane full of anchors that crashes. 
with like monkeys, like monkeys and anchors, and this plane crashes. Like news anchors. Like news anchors. Yeah. Instead of the like anchorman battle that happens, there's a battle between monkeys and the anchors with throwing stars. I want a polka. That That's also the movie? on like that was. In, like a part of this first draft. Oh, okay. It wasn't the whole movie. It wasn't the whole movie, but like a significant portion of this movie was anchors on a plane with monkeys that crash in the mountains kind of like alive. I have had it with these motherfucking monkeys on this motherfucking plane. And they have a throwing star battle. I would watch that. I, th I thought that. that was like the whole movie. It was called Anchors on a Plane. Anchors on a Plane, like snakes on a plane. I have had it with these motherfucking anchors on this motherfucking plane. I would watch. I watched Snakes on a Plane. I went and saw that in the movie theaters the night that it came out. I would watch that. I would oh, watch, I'd watch this that movie. too. Hundred percent. That's funny. But also the the scene, the, the 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 fight scene is one of the funniest scenes in the thing. Yeah, it's, it's iconic. ridiculous. Yeah, and that's that was their way of getting all of the um, like cameos like in one spot. Yeah, because yeah, Ben Stiller kind of shines there. Let me out of here, and I'll forget the whole goddamn thing. I I do wonder. Um, We've talked before about, because we can't relate to Gen Z or, you know, the, the kids now, if anyone knows this movie well, like, if you're 18, if you've seen Anchorman, if you love Anchorman, what your opinion is. Because, like, we had a guy filming us once who didn't, had never heard of The Sandlot. Moron! Is, is Anchorman thought of as funny to people younger than us? Because my... Assumption is this movie is going to live on forever because of the star power in it. Yeah. Steve Carell being a minor character in this, because this is a year before The Office. Yeah. And then he blows up. Uh, it'll just live on forever, and Will Ferrell's one of the funniest people ever, and it'll be loved by people my age, your age, and older forever. But are people who are 20, do they even do they get any of this? Do they think it's funny? Do they care Have they even all? seen it? I don't know. That's People were four when this came out who are 23 yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, but you would think that people would be in on this movie, like that Gen Z would be like in on this movie because of it's not problematic, it's funny, it's whatever. Then again, they'll find a problem with anything. I don't know. Gen Z sucks. I hate Gen Z. Yeah. It's the worst. I suck, huh? Unless Gen Z is, you know, big followers, then love you, Gen Z. You're, you're the best. Probably not. Nah, fuck them. No. I want to talk about a couple of things with regards to this. Um, so you and Will Ferrell have something in common. Uh, did you know that Will Ferrell uh, went to J school uh, at USC? That's right. I went to jacking off school. I didn't. I, I knew he went to USC. I yeah. assumed it was like theater or something. Yeah, he went to J school. Yeah, I went to J school, joint school, where I was smoking fat fucking bliffs in addition to the jacking off. And in fact, um, right when he got out of college, he had done some... Not anchoring, but he had done some TV work um, huh. where he had done, I think he had done sports. And uh, so it, it, it actually came into, uh, it was useful for him with this movie because he had experience doing that. That's like pretty real funny. life experience doing that. If you're referring to smoking joints and jacking off, then yes, I had that real life experience. That's cool. Yeah, which also kind of goes into the casting of this movie. It's so perfect. Like you talk about, it's like Steve Carell in this minor character role is so perfect. And yet, like, they had so many other people lined up that they could have cast in these roles that ended up either, you know, cameoing or, or just not being in it. Champ was originally going to be John C. Riley. I would have worked. Like, that would have worked. Yeah. Uh, this one wouldn't, it, it could have worked, but uh, Brick was going to be Chris Parnell. Who ended also up in, in another yeah. in another role? Um, Brian Fantana, Ben Stiller. Como están, bitches? Spanish language news is here. I think it worked out perfectly. I think it worked out perfectly, yeah. but like, you could see some of these other people playing those roles and just being like, yeah, that, yeah. that works. And that John works. John C. Riley is an easy one to, to picture because of uh, Step Brothers. Yeah. I know you touched my drum set, and I want to hear that dirty little mouth admit it. You get out of my face. You know this movie is a Chicago movie, right? Go on. I mean, you just nod your head because well, of course I, I, there, I know, yeah. There everything's... is always. So this movie is a Chicago movie because of Bill Curtis. Bill Curtis oh, doing yeah. the voiceover. Yeah. Very famous Chicago newscaster. 
One of the things that's hilarious about this is when this movie was coming out, he he agreed to do it, but wasn't sure it was going to be as big of a deal as it was. And at one point, the script had Bill Curtis saying penis. And Bill Curtis would not say the word penis on, on camera. He was like, I will not say this. I will not say it. And now, after the fact, now that like he knew, like knows that this movie was like blew up and was fantastic, he regrets not saying penis on in I, the movie. I wonder with AI if we can if we can pipe in Bill Curtis saying penis. Unfortunately, due to the limits of technology, we cannot have AI make me say penis. However, I happened to be in the neighborhood and heard you filming, so I thought I, the real life physical Bill Curtis would stop in for a quick saying of my favorite word, penis. Well, thanks for stopping in, Bill Curtis. I hope you've been doing well. Well, I'm sorry to say I actually got COVID. COVID in ladies' underpants. I owe. I'm, I'm sure. In his voice, that'd be hilarious to have him say penis or whale's vagina, something vulgar. Yeah, I mean, it would be absolutely fantastic to hear that. Personally, I love Gen Z. You know that uh, this movie is based off of a real-life person, yeah? Yeah. Right. So this is uh, a uh, anchor from Detroit named Mort Krim. King Julian! Uh, and uh, it was based off of his life because apparently he uh, said some very similar things uh, to uh, what Will Ferrell's, Ferrell's character says um, about having a female anchor. And uh, he says he regrets it. Not, or I don't know if he, he's probably dead at this point, to be honest with you, but... He said he regretted it, uh, the things that he had said. But uh, I have to imagine that him seeing himself as a parody in, as this anchorman, like this is his life. Do you think he would have liked that? Or do you think he would have been like... I would have. Like, uh, this makes it way worse. I would have, and most people don't know that backstory, probably. Yeah. So I'm I sure that most hilarious. people don't know is that actually based off a real life guy. Named Mort Krim. Mort Krim. Which is a hell of a name, too. No, I think... This is one of the best comedies of the last 20, 30 years. So I think you should be honored. I was uh, quite surprised. I met him at the after party uh, after Anchorman 2 was released. We attended the premiere as his guest. And he complimented me on showing such good humor uh, about the uh, parody. And I said, well, frankly, Will, if you had billed this movie as a documentary, I'd really be pissed. But I, <laughs> I would hope it's so. It's like Bill Curtis regrets not saying penis. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the Saturday Night Live uh, with Ray Romano, he where was where he was hosting, yeah. and he's the sportscaster, uh, or he was uh, he's he's a sportscaster on ESPN with Stuart Scott. No. Have you have you you've never seen so, this? No. This is also another thing that I quote. Uh, there's a lot of quotes from that particular sketch. Um, he plays this completely oblivious white guy sportscaster who says some very uh, out there things. Thank you, Stuart. Latest talk is that David Robertson is over the hill, but in my book, you gotta get to White Castle before the weirdos show up. <laughs> Tonight at the Alamo Dome, he gets happy go Jackie on the big white guy like a donkey eating a waffle. Sweet, sassy molassy. Get out the checkbook and pay grandma for the rub down as the Spurs beat the Heat 86 79. He says, uh, you know, champ in this says whammy, right? Which is very similar to the, uh, I think it's from Bloomington Normal, the, the sportscaster. Boom goes the dynamite. Boom goes the dynamite. Uh, Ball State. Ball State. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is very much like that. But the Ray Romano character does that. He, <laughs> Gus Johnson had a, a call like that. I think it was Chris Johnson, the former Titans running back, was breaking away, and Gus Johnson, this is him talking, not me, yells, he's got running away from the cop speed. <laughs> it was on a CBS broadcast. We'll pipe the clip in. He's got getting away from the cop speed. Touchdown! I, I mean, that, this all fits, right? Like, this yeah. all fits. Um, but definitely go back and, and check out that clip, because I think you'll appreciate the the comedy of that but this is essentially the same thing like the whole stuff with with champ is that sketch well because uh parroting local tv news and probably now cable news like we've done a couple of times actually is perfect because local tv news is actually ridiculous when you think about it oh yeah uh what's uh, what's the best kind of firework to buy 
Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? For sure. Sir, I, did you watch local news ever? I mean, I used to when I was commuting downtown, like before getting on the train, like I would watch WGN in the morning. And like, they are kind of a parody. Yeah, they, they make like, jokes and stuff. Themselves, like they're a parody of local news themselves. Yeah. Uh, but I, yes. But I mean, it's, the whole concept now is ridiculous. They'll be saying, uh, uh, wondering what the forecast is, what you have to wear this weekend. We'll be back in three minutes. And he's watching a toothpaste ad, and it's like, I can just look at my phone yeah. and figure out that it's 52 tomorrow. Yeah. The whole concept is ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, then this kind of touches on that, too, right? Yeah. With uh, the, the squirrel, the, the water skiing squirrel, or the panda watch. Hey, you're making me look stupid. Get out here, panda jerk. Great story. I mean, right. a lot of that is the ridiculousness of local news. Right. Yeah, so I think it's perfect because of that. Uh, I never saw a sequel. I watched it once, and I only did it begrudgingly like I do with most sequels. I watch them begrudgingly because I hate sequels. I was always very hesitant to watch it because the one thing that they would always put on the commercials was there's, a, there's I guess, in the movie, if I remember... Uh, a new newscaster who happens to be a black woman. Mm. And I, I think if I remember, I, I, I don't, I could be getting this completely wrong. All I know is there is a point in this movie where Will Ferrell goes to this woman's house and her family is there. So it's this one white guy, Will Ferrell and this entire black family. And he says some things that like, look at big Papa down here. He's saying to himself, shit, look at this honky. Sitting at my table eating my food in my house, touching my daughter. And it's very cringe. Like, it, it, it just goes to the point, like, sequels should never be made. Uh, this is a tangent, but on that point, one of the worst recent movies I've seen and sat through the entire thing is on Netflix right now. Eddie Murphy, Julie Louis-Dreyfus, Jonah Hill. I texted you. You about texted this. me about this one. What's the movie called again? What's the difference between me and you? You people. Yeah. I could not get over how bad that movie was. I yeah. was I was flipping through Netflix um, with Ann. We we're trying to figure out what to watch, and I came across and I was like, Kaiser said this movie was awful. The worst. So we just kept on going. Oh, I'm good because you would have been. I I watched the whole thing out of respect to Julie Louis Dreyfus. But it is, I know you love Eddie Murphy, it is embarrassingly bad. Atrocious. I digress just with the cringy, the, the thing you said yeah, about yeah. Anchorman 2. But I never saw Anchorman 2, never will. I'm going to stick with Anchorman 1. That's, there are some movies, Ferris Bueller is one of them, that should just never be made into a sequel. <laughs> Anchorman should never have been made into a sequel. It was, yeah. it was literally, you know, Spaceballs, The Search for More Money. Yeah, right. Um, Hangover 2, Hangover 3. Yeah. Awful. Which are the same thing. And that's why, I mean, you and I said it together. Uh, I think I had texted you when I had seen the trailer for the new History of the World. History of the World! Part two! Part two! Yeah. And, like, I am... I... So many people were like, this looks good. This looks... And I'm... I, I, I just can't see how it's going to be good. I know there is a very good writing team with it. Like Nick Kroll is in non writing on it. And Mel Brooks is is still writing on the movie. But man, I mean, I don't know how you can get better than that. Like I don't know how you can get better than History of the World Part One. Yeah, some ideas should just be left alone, you should come up with new ideas. Yeah. I, I agree. But I, I I'm probably still gonna watch it. I'm probably still gonna watch it and I guess we'll see if I like it. Yeah. I don't know. Probably won't. Probably not. Uh, one last thing. This movie kind of led to the falling out uh, between Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. I know that. Uh, who were, I mean, they were the dynamic duo, right? Like, uh, you think about the birth of the internet in terms of, like, YouTube and, uh, like, clips and funny things like that. And, and you have the landlady with Adam McKay. And that's Adam McKay's daughter, I believe, right? You I can give you half. You pay little bit. Have you seen? Have you not seen that? No, I have. I didn't know if it was his daughter. Um, I think it's his daughter. Um, and so many of the other movies that they that they did 
Adam McKay said he wants to work on serious things too, not silly movies like this, because he, he did like Don't Look Up. More like Don't Look Up the Rotten Tomatoes score. Which I didn't even bother. Well, maybe it's fine. I just didn't really I, I saw to me. it. Like, like it, it was, it was okay. It was, for me, it was a little too on the nose. That's what I was thinking. But it was fine. Like there were moments that I was, I laughed at it. But what has, he wants to have like an impact in film and whatever. What had more of an impact in, on your life? Don't Look Up or Anchorman? I mean, Anchorman, yeah, 100%. You're quoting it 19 years later. Yeah. There's something to be said about doing a comedy and doing a comedy right. And if you do a comedy, like it, it's not easy to do. I mean, look at how many people try to do comedy and think, well, I, I'm funny. I'm a funny guy, right? I mean, I'm, I'm an example. Like, I, hit, I think I'm funny. I'm probably not funny. People are probably on the internet telling me how unfunny I am. But it, when you get a comedy right and you do a movie that just all of the notes hit, that's better sometimes than like a serious movie yeah, or even like a even a, a political commentary or a social commentary like it's better just like be funny yeah it, may, it makes more of a lasting impact i talk about my laugh hall of fame sometimes which includes uh too many cooks airplane a couple other things uh will ferrell playing the the flute is in my laugh hall of fame yeah when i first saw that it's one of the hardest i ever laughed i mean you know he's he's you know mimicking the whole uh jazz flute yeah. uh, era of music, right? right. Uh, Steely Dan. But there are so many things in this movie that they just, they got. And they got it right. And you're right, it's going to live on kind of forever as one of those movies. Uh, Ferris Bueller, Trading Places, History I of the World. So. And you'll show your kids channels, one day and they'll you know? be like, Dad, what the fuck is this? Like, this movie sucks. Oh, like when I showed my nieces Tommy Boy and they were like, exactly. this is supposed to be funny? And like, yeah, this thing. is hilarious. Holy shnikes. Yeah. What's your prediction on the score? I'm, I'm thinking that this is one of the higher comedies. I'm, I mean, just like normal, right? Like, it's hesitant to break an eight. I, I want it to break an eight. I want it to break an eight. But I'm going to say 7.8. I'm going to say 7.5. Seven point one. Ooh! Wow! Yikes! I was actually I was thinking, it, well, you you pushed me a little bit higher, but I, I mean I don't know like I don't know why it would be people would think it's that low. I mean it's stupid. Yeah, but it's <laughs> like it's not Paul Blart stupid. I guess. I Sorry, Kevin James, but it's, I mean, it's like... I'd be curious to read some of the negative reviews. You know, I yeah, I mean, people are going to say it's dumb for some reason. I don't know. People suck. Whatever. 